In the annals of South Korean criminal history, few cases have stirred as much public attention and fear as that of Kang Ho Sun, aka the Korean Ted Bundy. Between 2005 and 2008, Kang, a seemingly ordinary man, embarked on a horrifying spree, ultimately being convicted for the murder of 10 women, including his wife and her mother. As we delve into this case, we uncover not just the facts of his crimes, but also the broader societal reflections they prompt about the nature of evil, the complexity of human psychology, and the quest for justice in the face of unimaginable tragedy. Born in the tranquil countryside of Sichmyeon, South Korea, on October 10, 1969, Kang Ho Sun's early life gave little indication of the turmoil that would later unfold. Growing up in a nation on the cusp of an economic boom, Kang navigated a world where tradition clashed with the pressures of modernization. He grew up on a farm, and without a clear direction for his life, he enlisted in the army. He was discharged two years later, though, for stealing cattle. When he was 22, he got married and later got two kids from this union. Kang's descent into infamy began after his divorce in 1998, when he decided to move up north to Bibon Mion and settled down on a farm where he would raise livestock. He was known to pick up stray dogs. Yet, as it is often the case with serial killers, these dogs would soon become his first victims on his long path of destruction. After a few years, he married for the fourth time, his wife Kang Hye Jin being a massage therapist and having her own business. Ho Sun helped her out with her business on top of working on his farm. Life seemed to be going great for him, after a somehow chaotic life he'd been leading so far. The unsettling journey into Kang Ho Sun's spree of violence begins in October 2005 and spans over three dark years until December 2008. This period in South Korean history is marked by a series of disappearances and murders that cast a long shadow of fear across the nation, particularly within the Gyeonggi province where Kang primarily operated. On October 30, 2005, Ho Sun's wife Hye Jin was having tea with her mother in their home when the house suddenly caught fire. Sadly, both women perished in the fire. It was first ruled accidental but later confirmed to be arson. As you may have guessed, this was Ho Sun's first murders in a long streak of evil. Over the next three years, Kang targeted women who, in his perception, were vulnerable. These women, often young and leading ordinary lives, became the victims of his growing cruelty. The method of the murders was chillingly consistent, with strangulation emerging as a preferred method. On December 14, 2006, Bai Kyung Mi, a 45-year-old karaoke bar employee became one of Kang's victims, marking the beginning of a pattern where he preyed on women associated with entertainment venues. On January 3, 2007, the discovery of a 52-year-old office worker's body in Hwasong illustrated the indiscriminate nature of Kang's selection of victims, expanding the geography of his crimes. On November 9, 2008, Kang's last known murder involved a 48-year-old housewife in Suwon, highlighting not just the duration over which these crimes were committed, but also the sense of impunity with which Kang operated. After committing a total of six gruesome murders by strangulation, Ho Sun decided to collect the life insurance he had taken out just five days before his wife's death in the fire for a total of $500,000. Communities lived in the shadow of a predator, as Kang exploited the night and the vulnerabilities of his victims to carry out his sinister plans. Each murder, meticulously planned and executed with cold precision, peeled back layers of the facade Kang presented to the world, revealing the depth of his depravity. The following factors are only speculations and do not justify criminal behavior. Serial killers often exhibit psychopathic tendencies, including a profound lack of empathy, which allows them to commit such crimes without remorse or consideration for the suffering of their victims. Some individuals commit crimes for the thrill of it, seeking excitement or a sense of power over their victims, which they might not experience in other areas of their lives. Traumatic experiences during childhood, such as abuse, neglect, or exposure to violence, can significantly impact an individual's emotional development and may lead to violent behaviors in adulthood. 
A common theme among serial killers is the desire to exert control over their victims. This need for dominance can stem from feelings of powerlessness in their own lives. Serial killers often have violent fantasies that precede their crimes. Over time, these fantasies can become more elaborate and compelling, driving them to act out these scenarios in reality. In some cases, serial killings are motivated by sexual deviance, where the act of killing is intertwined with sexual gratification. The culmination of fear and investigation in the wake of Kang Ho Sun's crimes reached a pivotal moment with his arrest on January 27, 2009. Located in Ansan, a city within the Gyeonggi province where many of his crimes occurred, Kang was taken into custody, bringing an end to the immediate fear that had gripped the region. Throughout the proceedings, the evidence presented was overwhelming, painting a detailed picture of Kang's actions and his attempts to evade capture. The trial delved into the specifics of each crime, the methodology of Kang's approach to his victims, and the chilling lack of remorse shown in his confessions. The prosecution argued not only for justice for the victims, but also emphasized the need to protect society from an individual who had demonstrated a profound capacity for violence. On April 22, 2009, Kang was sentenced to death, a verdict that resonated deeply within a society grappling with the aftermath of his crimes. The media played a pivotal role in shaping the public's perception of the case. Coverage was extensive, and it raised ethical questions about revealing a suspected killer face to the public. This case led to the change of the law in South Korea, which means that criminals' identities are now kept private to protect their families and the families of the victims. In 2022, the case was further immortalized through its depiction in the South Korean TV series Through the Darkness, which explored the psychological depths of criminal minds, including Kang's.